we have this indefinite integral dx 1 plus 1 over 1 plus a cosine x. Now I cannot think of any useful, immediately useful trig identity. So I think of perhaps I can use cosine x equal to cosine x squared half x minus sine squared half x. Okay. But this is also equal to over 1. But 1 is equal to cosine squared plus sine squared. It's the same thing. So here we can just easily divide both the top and bottom, top and bottom by cosine squared. So the cosine squared becomes 1. Sine squared becomes tangent squared. So 1 minus tangent squared. 1 plus tangent squared. So if I let tangent half x equal to t, then half x should be equal to arc tangent t. x is twice arc tangent of t. dx is equal to 2 times 1 over 1 plus t squared dt. So my ideal integral is, first of all, 2, 1 plus t squared. That's dx. So 1 plus a times this bit. Like I said, 1 minus t squared, 1 plus square okay so here I just have here's DT right so times times 1 plus a times 1 plus T square 1 minus T square right, that's the uh, bottom so that's equal to 2 DT so here I have 1 plus t squared. There I have 1 plus t squared. There is, there is uh, this bit times, uh, times 1. Okay. So 1 plus t squared. And I also have plus a times 1 minus t squared. Right, Here is what I have at the top. So there I can just cancel out. Right, so I just need to work out 2 times dt. Here I combine t square. Right, t square. So 1 minus a. Uh, there is a condition. We require a to be bigger than 1. Okay, so t square. And also plus 1 plus a. Because a is bigger than 1, so 1 minus a is less than 1. So if I multiply by negative and negative, so negative 2 dt, this becomes a minus 1. This should be positive now. Right? Minus, minus 1 minus a. Bracket plus. Okay. So there I can just factor out one min a minus one, the partial fraction, negative two. Okay, so uh, like I said, negative two, factor out a minus one. Okay, so dt. Okay, t squared minus uh, a minus 1, 1 plus a, a plus 1, huh? same thing. Eventually trying to solve this integral. So just to save some space, I'll just let this equal to b. Right? So that way I only need to work out This, right, so dt, t squared minus b, 
actually factored it to be t minus square root of b t plus square root of b okay then I can just just focus on this so partial fraction t minus square root of b plus t plus square root of b uh, dt. So I'm going to put 1 and uh, negative 1. All right, so I should have here t plus square root of b minus t. So t is gone. Minus minus plus twice of square root of b. So I should divide by that. Twice of square root of b. So therefore, I eventually have exactly one on the top, just like this one. So, again, so square root of b is what? This square root. So, square root of b, square root of b times a minus 1. Right, so, a minus 1. And this at a minus one square root of a minus one. So square. Root, so I just need to work out uh, negative one over square root of a plus one times a minus one. So a square minus one. Yep. So this will become log t of our absolute value. Of course, I have to stress that first, when I, uh, when I use that trig identity, I somehow, because this substitution, I somehow divide, I divide by cosine Cosine square, right? So co I divide by this. So meaning this cannot be zero, right? So, so cosine half x cannot be zero. So half x cannot be uh, half pi plus k pi. So x cannot be uh, pi plus 2k pi. That's the condition. Otherwise, I cannot do the division. Okay, so here is still absolute value minus log absolute value t plus square root of b plus c later. Okay. This is eventually negative 1 over square root of a squared minus 1 right, a squared a ne bigger than 1 bigger than 0 no problem log I do so t minus square root of b over t plus square root of b elsewhere right, plus c later now square can we further simplify this T minus square root of b. So uh, t minus square root of b. A minus 1, a plus 1. Okay, so uh, t plus square root. Yeah, simplify that. Square root of a minus 1. Square root of a minus 1, t minus square root of a plus 1, square root of a minus 1, square root of a minus 1, t plus square root of a plus 1. Okay, so this, this cancel out. Okay. 
t. t is of course tangent half x. So this should be eventually negative square root of a square minus 1 log square root of a minus 1 times t. t is tangent half x minus minus plus. Perhaps I'll get rid of this uh, minus and uh, flip flip this. So plus square root of a plus one. Right. Put this on the bottom. Square root of a minus one tangent half x minus square root of a plus y plus c. I'm almost done, but not quite, because like I mentioned, when I do, uh, do the trig identity, I divide it by cosine half x. So x cannot be pi plus 2k pi. Right? In other words, x cannot be uh, all the multiple of pi, okay? So what if right, what if x x is equal to this? What happens? So if that's the case, then cosine x would be equal to negative one. Then the Integral is dx1 minus a. Right, that is equal to x over 1 minus a. x is equal to so pi plus 2k pi over 1 minus a. Right. That is the uh, antiderivative when x is equal to this value. If it's not equal to this value, we have we have this. All right. So at least we should make sure make sure that the whole function should be continuous at at this point. Otherwise, how can they, how can they be differentiated to give us this? Right? We should. So to make sure it's continuous, uh, first I'll um, I'll just plus this value pi plus two k pi, then plus c. So eventually, I say. So before we plus c, I say call this this function um, f x. Right? So the antiderivative is piecewise function. Right? So uh, f x equal to f x. If x is not equal to uh, pi plus 2k pi, right? if x is equal to pi plus 2k pi, right? then we say it's equal to pi plus 2k pi over 1 minus i. Right? It's a piecewise function. However, the piecewise function is still continuous at this point. Of course, differentiable also at this point and anywhere else, also differentiable. So even eventually I say antiderivative is equal to f of x plus c. Now we plus c. 